Hello and welcome to this video on an introduction to toggles and groups inside of TS GUI. Uh, now just a quick overview on what toggles and groups actually does for you. Um, if we run up our example config here and we accept the message, what we can do with, um, with groups and toggles is we can effectively turn pieces of the GUI on and off based on options we select. Now sort of a common example or a basic example would be um, having an additional apps checkbox here. So if the user starts the, the GUI up and they just want to accept the defaults, they click finish. If they want to do other things, they tick the box, that unlocks an additional page where they can select additional apps. And if we click finish, we can see that our options are selected. A slightly more ex advanced example might be something like this, where we have a similar setup to before, but when we tick our additional apps box, we have Office or Visio. However, if we then select the project management department, we also unlock the project application as an option. And this might be useful if you have a large number of departments and a large number of apps and you really just want to filter down the options that are available um, to whoever is using the GUI um, when they select the options they select. So we're going to break this up into two different videos. Uh, we're going to run through the first example in this video. That's really just the, the basics and to be honest probably what a lot of people will be using this for. Um, in the second video, we'll be running through option two and the various permutations you can um, do to um, unlock parts of the GUI using drop-down lists especially um, can be a bit more complicated. So let's make a start. So we have our um, a third config here. Now this GUI has just been set up with a very basic um, set up no groups or toggle set up at this point but we have our our main options we have our department we can select and we have all of our applications available for selection um, but they are all turned on no matter what so if we open up our config.xml and I've already got our examples config examples.xml file open as well um, and we can see in here we have a couple of pages, each with a column on each page, and then we have um, our computer name, our OS version, our department, drop-down list, and then our application checkboxes. So the first thing we're going to do is create a group. Now a group can be um, can contain any number of elements within the GUI and by element I mean either a page, a column or a GUI option. So we can create the group um, at the page level and everything, um, well effectively that page will be um, affected by the option that you select. So if you tick the box and say um, to enable the page then the page is there. If you disable the page then the entire page can either be hidden or completely disabled and all of the options on that page will be disabled. Um, same thing with the column, if you disable the column you will disable all of the options inside that column. So from an, um, an inheritance point of view the page and column settings will win. If they are set to be hidden they will be hidden and everything on that page will be hidden. Um, if you select that the column will be disabled, everything on in that column will be disabled, no matter what you do with any other group selections. If you set a group at a GUI option um, level, then the um, and there's no um, sort of inherited hides or disabled coming from the the pages or the columns. Um, above them, then they will take whatever um, has been set on their group. Um, once we get a bit more um, into the config, hopefully some of that will sort of start to make a bit more sense. 
So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to add some of our um, options to a group, just so you can kind of see what's happening. So if we come into our examples and we just grab a group um, tag. Now, as I said, we can apply this to our page or we can apply it to our column or we can apply it just to an individual group. Sorry, to an individual GUI option. So to start with, we're going to actually do what we um, were planning um, with the, the very first example, and we're going to just disable that second page entirely unless the tick box is selected. So we want to add the page to a group, and we're going to give the group a name. So let's give this um, a name of group underscore apps. So that's pretty much done as far as groups go. Now what we need to do is we need to create what's called a toggle. And a toggle is the thing that turns the group on or off. Um, so if we come back to our examples. Now a toggle uh, will be either a checkbox or a drop down list. And the gen most of the setup and syntax of the checkbox or the, the drop-down list is basically the same as your normal checkbox. What we have is this additional toggle piece here. So let's take this whole checkbox and paste it in here and let's throw it in and see what it starts doing for us. So we want that below our drop-down list for our department. And we're going to give this a name of toggle underscore apps, just to kind of match our group. Now, one thing to note is that this is still a GUI option, and this was this will still create a task sequence variable. So, in that way, um, if you want to create just logic purely on the checkbox, you still can, and then additionally, you can have the toggle to turn other parts on and off. So this is going to create a variable called toggle underscore apps. We've got a label called additional apps. Um, this is going to be aligned to the left. And now let's come down to our toggle. Now the first thing you need to set is which group this toggle applies to. Now in this case, obviously, this is going to apply to the group underscore apps group. So we set that accordingly. Now we're going to set what enables the toggle and therefore enables the group and what disables the toggle and therefore disables the group. Now with a checkbox, uh, the default values are just true and false. So normally you can just leave those as they are. What effectively is happening is that when you change the option, the toggle is going to look at the value or the current value of your variable. And in this case, if the option is ticked, the variable would be set to true. And if it was unticked, it would be set to false. So it reads that value and takes the appropriate action. And then this option here is whether or not to hide the element that you've set or to just disable it. Now just to make so we can see what's happening, for now I'm just going to comment this part out so you can see, rather than hiding the entire page, this is just going to disable it and effectively grey everything out. Oh, that's just been saved. Now let's have a look at our GUI. Now, as you can see, we've got our new checkbox for additional apps. And if we click Next right now, see everything is greyed out. But you can still see it. So that's a disabled state as opposed to a hidden state. Click Back, click Next. Now, if we click Finish on this, you can see here that the 
GUI options we created here, MS Office, MS Visio, MS Project, they are all currently disabled. When that happens, the value will be set to TSGUI underscore inactive. So you can create logic based on that inside your task sequence. If the thing's selected, then do this. If the thing's not selected, then do this. If nothing has been selected, i.e. The, the option is completely disabled, then do this. Um, there are options to change this value, which we'll probably cover in video two. So let's have a look at what happens when rather than disable it, we want to actually hide that entire page. So let's turn, let's tell our toggle to hide our group. And let's run it up again. Now you can see here, we no longer have an X button, we just have a straight finish button. When you hide a page, it removes it from the chain in the GUI. So if there's nothing to go to and the page is completely hidden, you will just get a finish button. And if we click on finish, you can see again, all of our options are marked as inactive. If we check our box, we now have a next button and we can select the options we want. You can see here they're all enabled and all the values are now true, true, true for all the um, tick boxes. So that's the basic setup for just a, a simple tick here to have an additional apps page. Now, say instead of doing the entire page, we just wanted to have um, the Visio and Project tick boxes hidden. So by default, you'll get a second page and you can turn Microsoft Office on and off. Um, but if you tick the additional apps button, you also then get the option for um, Microsoft Visio and Microsoft Project. So all we really need to do here is we get rid of our group from the page level. So this page will always be active. And now we're going to paste that in to the GUI options that we want to make a member of that group. So in this case, we want Visio to be a member of the group and we want um, Project to be a member of the group. So now our toggle is only affecting these two elements, these two GUI options. So let's have a look and see what that looks like. And you can see here, if we click next without ticking the box, we only get Microsoft Office. And we can turn that on or off as we see fit. And again, Visio and Project are marked inactive. However, if we select the additional apps, we now get Visio and Project. So that's the basic overview of toggles and groups. Um, in the second video, we're going to be looking at more advanced options. We're going to be covering multiple groups. We're going to be covering groups based on drop-down lists, and there's a couple of ways to configure those. We're going to be covering purging, and purging is an option whereby if you have an inactive um, GUI option or inactive task sequence variable, it will actually not get created at all. And there's certain scenarios where that may be useful. Um, and basically all of the more advanced ways to use this particular feature. So that's it. Uh, if you have any queries or feedback, um, please leave a comment below or um, flick me um, a feedback form via the 20road.com website. Thanks very much.